Hello, today I'd like to talk to you about how to import data using Acumatica. Our agenda is pretty short. We're just really going to talk about how to create a data provider. The data provider is used to access the data for the import. The import is called an import scenario. So we're going to talk about how the import scenario is created. And then we're going to talk about how we run the import scenario. So first, we're going to look at the data provider. So here I am in Acumatica, and I'm under system, integration, manage, and the data providers. So this is where the data providers are, are maintained. Now, I've already created the data provider here. I'll just go ahead and do a lookup. And we'll go ahead and select this. The example I'm going to use today is how to import customers in uh, Acumatica. So I'll choose that, that data provider. So the data provider name can be whatever you want it to be. And then the provider type is going to be based on the source file that you're going to import it, be importing from. So we're going to use an Excel provider. Now the thing that you have to go to here is the schema. Now typically all you do here is fill the schema objects. It looks at the Excel spreadsheet and pulls the tabs in. These are the two tabs. And then you, you push the button that says fill schema fields and it reads the column headings and pulls those in. Now how does it know what file to do this with? Well, we attach the file. So up in the right hand corner, You'll see that I have a file here It says files one, and you can just browse to the file that you're importing from. Now I've already done this. So the file is called AR import customer template XLSX, and I have that file open. And it looks like this. So it reads the column headings for the schema and identifies what the columns are that you can import in using Acumatica. So I have a column ID, column, customer name, customer class, etc. We attach that file to the import scenario, we upload it, and then we read the schema, and that creates the import data provider. Our next topic is how to create the import scenario. Now that we have our data provider, let's go ahead and go to import scenarios. And so we'll open up the import scenario. And once again, I've already created this, but I want to show it to you. So I have an import scenario called import AR customers. Now, when you do the import scenario, you're just going to navigate to the screen in Acumatica where the data is going to be provided. So when we're doing an import in Acumatica, we actually match the data entry screen because it simulates doing the data entry. It actually does one row or one record at a time and it simulates the data entry. So as you can see here, our screen name is customers and it's under accounts receivable, manage, and then customers. Our providers, that import provider we just looked at. The provider object is the data tab that's on that spreadsheet and then the sync type is full. Now, down below is where we do something that we typically call mapping, which is we identify the fields that we want to import into, and we identify the values that we're going to provide for those fields. So if we take a look at our Acumatic Maintain Customer screen, and there's a shortcut to that right here, top part of the screen is called the customer summary. So under the customer summary is where we have the account ID. And then under GL, general info, if we go back, you can see the tab for general info. We have the values and the data that's going to be there. And then we also have customer summary again. So this is a pretty simple import. We're just importing name and address, phone number, those kinds of things. But your import can touch all of the tabs here. They, you can go into the billing settings, delivery settings, whatever you want to do. But we're just touching the, the two tabs here, the summary information and the general info. 
So the customer ID, the status, and the customer name are all part of the customer summary. So we select customer summary as our area, and we choose our account ID as our key, and it fills in this information automatically. But then we get down here to customer summary. We're choosing the column customer ID, and I can do a drop down here. You can see all the fields that are part of the customer summary. And we're going to say customer ID. And you can see that we're going to import that field from the source called customer ID. So when I do a drop down over here, it shows me all of the fields that are available to import from based on that data provider that we created. And these fields are coming from the field schema. So we're going to import the customer ID from the customer ID. Sounds pretty straightforward, right? Okay. And then customer names coming from customer name, et cetera, et cetera. Now, again, this is emulating or it's uh, duplicating the process that you would go through to actually hand enter or key in a customer. Well, when we key in a customer, when we're done, we push the save button to save that information. When we write an import scenario, we want to do the same thing. So we go back to the customer summary, and this should always be the last row on your import scenario. If we go to the customer summary and we do a drop down, you can see there's a number of actions here. So the action that we want to execute at the end here is action save, which saves the customer record. Now, I don't have any examples of this uh, here, but if you wanted to, you can also assign values here. You don't have to pull the value from the source file. So for example, if I wanted to assign a state of California, I could just push this little button here, which opens up the formula field, and I could say equal single quote CA. And that will assign the value. Now I'm going to validate. Now be understand the validation here doesn't mean you're going to get the result you want. It just means the syntax is correct. Okay. So I'm going to assign that value of CA instead of reading the value from the source file. So as you write your imports, if there are fields that you want to assign the value, you can. You can also do mathematical calculations. You can take the quantity times the unit price to calculate it, extended amount, those kinds of things. Understand also Acumatica will pull, on it, pull in its default values as well. So if my customer class is uh, whatever the class is, and it has assigned the GL account numbers for accounts receivable and sales and those kinds of things, it'll pull those in automatically. I don't have to have them in my import which is why my import scenario can be pretty short here. Now I'm not going to save these changes, so I'm just going to undo all that. So our next step is to run the import. So our last step here after creating the import scenario is to actually run it. So we're going to talk about how to run the import scenario. Okay, now that we have our import scenario created, we're going to go to the process import by scenario. And I've selected import AR customers here. Now, notice that I still have the files available up here. So this is the file that I'm going to import from. So if I have an import that I'm going to run on a frequent basis and the data is going to change, then what I would do is unload this particular file and then browse to and upload a new file. It doesn't have to be the same name just has to have the same schema. So the first thing you do when you come in here is prepare. So we always want to prepare. Now prepare will count the number of rows. We've got a green arrow here, it means it's completed. I also like to check the box that says discard previous result. What that does is if there's any errors, it doesn't know about the errors the subsequent time you run the import. But you always want to do the prepare. And what the prepare does is bring the data into Acumatica. So technically, when you run the import by scenario, it's not importing the data from the spreadsheet. 
it is in fact importing the data from the prepared data. Once the data is loaded into Acumatica, it takes the data out of the spreadsheet, puts it into the database of, of Acumatica. So it's not technically reading the data from the spreadsheet when it does the import, it's reading the data from the prepare. So that means a couple of things. If I go to the source spreadsheet and I make a change, I need to reload that spreadsheet with my files here. I need to reload that spreadsheet with my files and I need to re-prepare because if I don't re-prepare, the data that's loaded in the Acumatica database hasn't changed. The other thing is you can come into the prepared data and you can make changes. So for example, if I just double click on the country code here and I wanted to change the country code, I can just type in a different country code. I don't have to go back to the spreadsheet and make that change. I can make the change directly in the prepared data of Acumatica. So this is kind of interesting, kind of hard to understand, but remember that it's not importing the data from the spreadsheet, it's importing the data from the prepare. So the first thing we're gonna do is prepare. After we do the prepare, we can then do the import. Now, if we look at this column that says active, a check marks means attempt to import that row. If you want to clear the check box and not import a particular row, you can certainly do that. And in fact, you can toggle them all off or all on, however you want to do that. Now I have a 91 rows here, that's not a lot, but if I had 91,000 rows, I probably don't want to go through and manually check this on and off for each individual row. The process column will tell me that it was successful in importing. Now, again, you want to look at your data after it's been imported and verify that it is correct. If I have information that I'm importing into the wrong, wrong field, it still may successfully import because it's not gonna fail validation, but it may not be correct. So you wanna look at that too. When we do the import, there's error processing as well. So if, if a row fails, it'll give us a, a piece of error information. So the other thing I recommend that you do is do a trial import before you do the actual import. So I'm gonna to go to the details tab and you can see there's some options over here. Now to do a trial, what you do is you check on this box that says validate the data, no saving. It means that it's going to check the data to make sure that it is valid before it actually does the import. It's not going to save it. There's also an option to break on error. So I have 91 records. If I, if let's say uh, record number 30 generates an error and I have break on error, it's going to stop when that error occurs. And it's gonna show what's happened with records one through 30. But it's not going to show me what happens with records 31 through 91. So this is personal preference, but I always like to not break on error. Cause if I'm doing a test import, I wanna go through all the records and make sure they're all going to be successful uh, or know which ones aren't even if um, that unsuccessful record starts somewhere in the middle. So I'm going to do both of those things. I'm going to save this. Now this sounds weird. I'm going to push the button that says import, but it's actually not going to import because I have validate data, no saving checked on. So we'll say import and it's cranking along here. You notice I can push the button to a stop, but we'll let that, that import. It's finished, there, have, there were no errors. If there were errors, this would be red. And if I go to the prepared data column, you can now see that the checkbox is processed and there are no errors. If I wanna filter the column for no errors, I could say it's not null. And you can see there are no columns where the error is not null, so I'll just clear the filter. So in my test was absolutely successful. So we're ready to import. But once again, before we import all of the rows, whether it's 91 rows or 91,000 rows, I recommend that we import one or two and then go look at the data and make sure it's correct. So we're gonna go ahead and toggle the processing 
check that off. By the way, if that's still checked on when you do an import, it will skip them because it thinks it's already imported them. So we're going to turn that off. But I'm also going to toggle the activation. And I'm just going to import the first couple of customers here. So that's active staff and alphabet LT. So just these two. And then we'll import. Now in my details, we'll turn that off as well. So we're no longer going to just validate the data. We're going to actually do the import. So we're going to import the first two. So there you go. It's successful. So if I were to go look at my customers here, so if I go to finance, accounts receivable, manage customers, and I look at those customers, active staff, I can verify that the data elements ended up in the right place, that I got the result that I expected. Much better to know this is incorrect after only importing one or two records than importing 91,000 records or a large number. So I'm just verifying that my name is correct, uh, phone numbers, all that kind of stuff. So I go back to I, Excel spreadsheet or back to my prepared data, and I would just make sure that that's correct. And obviously it is. So once we've done that, we can go ahead and import the rest. So what I'll do is to toggle the processing. Excuse me. I meant to toggle the activation. So even though these two records are still activated, since they've been previously processed, they won't process again. And now we'll do the import again. And I'll go to the details, turn off, break on air. When I leave the screen and come back, it always turns it back on. It doesn't matter in this example because we know that all of the records are going to successfully import. So we'll go ahead and let that run. And you can see it's checking these off even while this is running. So I go to the next page, see how fast I can go here to catch up with it. See if I can find the, those haven't been done yet, see? Now they all have been done. So you can see it checking off the process as it goes through. Lastly, you're welcome to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're on LinkedIn under NIMS and Associates. You can also contact Henry Kim at NIMS and Associates at his email, hkim at nimsassociates.com, our office phone number, extension 6346. If you have any questions or suggestions for topics going forward.